Hi, in this video we will look at how metal and non-metal atoms form ions and we will then look at how to work out the charges present on these ions. Click the links in the description below if you need more help with this topic. The atom shown opposite contains three protons and four neutrons in its nucleus. Now that recall that each proton has a charge of plus one so this means that the total positive charge in the nucleus due to the presence of these three protons is plus three. The neutrons do not have any charge. Now in atoms for every proton there is one electron present. So this means that this atom will contain three electrons. These three electrons will go into the electron shells or energy levels with two electrons going into the first shell or energy level and one electron going into the second shell or energy level. Now each electron has a negative charge, so the total negative charge in the atom from these three electrons is minus three. Now overall, this means that the charge on the atom will be zero, since the three positive charges from the protons will be cancelled by the three negative charges from the electrons. Now this is true for all atoms. The number of protons is the same as the number of electrons, and this means that all atoms will be neutral with no charge. You may recall a simple rule which states that elements only react if they can end up with full outer electron shells or energy levels. That is, the same electron arrangement as a noble gas in group zero of the periodic table. Now as an example, consider the element sodium. Now sodium is a very reactive metal found in group one of the periodic table. In the periodic table, sodium is the element number 11. And so an atom of sodium will have 11 protons in its nucleus and 11 electrons in its energy levels or shells. Now recall that the first electron shell can hold a maximum of two electrons, while the second electron shell can hold up to eight electrons, and this leaves one electron to go into the outer shell or energy level. So this will give a sodium atom with an electron arrangement of 281. This means that overall, there are 11 positively charged protons inside the nucleus and 11 negatively charged electrons in the electron shells. So the sodium atom is neutral with no overall charge. However, in order to end up with full electron shells, the sodium atom will lose its outer electron when it reacts. This means that there will now only be 10 negatively charged electrons in the electron shells, but there will still be 11 positively charged protons in the nucleus. This means that the sodium atom now has a positive charge, and we call atoms with charges ions. The sodium ion will have a charge of plus one because there are more positively charged protons in the nucleus than negatively charged electrons in the energy levels or shells. Now a group one metal such as sodium, as we have seen, will lose one electron in its outer shell to form a metal ion with a plus one charge. We usually just call these positively charged metal ions cations. Now what about a group 2 metal such as magnesium, which is two electrons in its outer shell? Well, when it reacts, the magnesium atom will simply lose both of these electrons to form a, ca a metal cation with a plus two charge. While a group 3 metal such as aluminium will lose the three electrons in its outer shell or energy level to form a metal cation with a three plus charge. We can summarize, summarize this by looking at the periodic table where we can see, for example, all group one metals will form cations with a plus one charge and group two metals will form cations with a two plus charge. And as you might expect, group three metals will form cations with a three positive charge. As we have seen, metals from groups one, two and three in the periodic table tend to lose electrons when they react to form positively charged metal cations. We can show this using the following equations. So for example, a group one metal such as lithium will lose one electron to form a positively charged lithium cation. Whereas a group two metal such as calcium will lose two electrons to form a cation with a two positive charge. And a group three metal as we have seen such as aluminium will lose three electrons to form an aluminium cation with a three plus charge. When non-metal elements react 
Unlike metals, they tend to gain electrons. So for example, consider the non-metal oxygen, which has an atomic number of 8, and therefore has 8 positively charged protons in its nucleus. And since it is an atom, it will have 8 negatively charged electrons in the electron shells or energy levels. It will have 2 electrons in the first shell and 6 electrons in the second shell or energy level. So to gain a last full shell, each oxygen needs to gain 2 electrons, usually from a metal atom. Now when an oxygen atom gains 2 electrons, then it will have 2 more negatively charged electrons than positively charged protons and so it will have a charge of 2 minus. These negatively charged ions are often called anions. While group 6 non-metals will gain 2 electrons when they react to further outer shells, what about say a group 7 element? As an example, consider the group 7 halogen chlorine, which is an atomic number of 17, which means it will contain 17 protons in its nucleus. It will also have 17 electrons in its electron shells with an electron arrangement of 287. This means that chlorine only needs to gain one more electron to fill its outer shell and so it will form a chloride ion with a minus one charge. Finally, consider an element from group 5 of the periodic table such as nitrogen. Now, nitrogen has an atomic number of 7, so it will contain 7 protons in its nucleus and it will also have 7 electrons in its electron shells with an electron arrangement of 2,5. This means that the nitrogen atom needs to gain 3 electrons to fill its outer shell and it will form an anion with a 3 minus charge. We can summarise these reactions using the following equations. A group 5 non-metal such as nitrogen will gain 3 electrons to form an nitride anion with a 3 minus charge while an element in group 6 of the periodic table such as oxygen will gain 2 electrons to form an oxide ion with a 2 minus charge, while the group 7 halogen such as chlorine will gain 1 electron to form a halide ion with a minus 1 charge. To summarise we can say that metals when they react tend to lose electrons to form positively charged cations while non-metals, when they react, will gain electrons to form negatively charged anions. The charges on these anions and cations formed will depend on the position of the element in the periodic table.